Hey everybody, what's up? In this video, I'm going to be giving you all a close, in-depth, in-person review of the LEGO Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts collectible minifigure series. This series features 22 different characters, and before I begin, I actually want to just point out a couple things involving the series. First off, each minifig is packaged in a blind bag, for those of you who don't know, and you don't know which one you're getting, in each bag. Second off, with the bases of this series, something very, very interesting is that they're actually made a little bit faulty. I'm not really sure why, but you'll see in the review that the minifigs don't stand well on them. Next up for wands, minifigs that come with wands, which is almost all of them, come with two wands each. So whenever you get a minifig with a wand, you actually get a spare wand. They just come attached like this, and that is really awesome. And last up, this series introduced the brand new miniature posable legs for LEGO. I did a whole separate video on them, so please be sure to check it out. And without further ado, let's look at these minifigures in the order that they appear on the collection sheet. <laughs> So first up here is Harry Potter and Harry looks really good. He's got a really nice printing on his torso for the Gryffindor outfit but he also has the um, robes there. His hairpiece looks nice. He only has one face and his accessory is Hedwig which I think is pretty good although it is the same owl we've gotten in a bunch of the other sets. Here is Hermione and she also has her Hogwarts robes complete on here but it is different than Harry's. Hermione comes with Crookshanks which is her cat. Do note that Crookshanks does not stand very well on these bases, considering the malfunction with them. But for Hermione, her hair looks really nice, it really looks good, and her facial expression along with just her whole character as a whole looks really nice, so yeah, very happy with this one. Next up, here's Ron Weasley, and Ron very clearly is from Goblet of Fire. This looks just like him, and I think he looks fantastic. He uses Han Solo's hairpiece which I think is actually really, really good for him. Yeah, he looks just like Ron Weasley in Goblet of Fire. He also has Scabbers there, which is interesting because that doesn't really go with Goblet of Fire. But notice that Scabbers actually is printed, which makes Scabbers different from the rat that's included in the Great Hall set. So that's pretty cool. Here is Draco Malfoy. He comes with a ton of accessories. He comes with the Golden Snitch, he comes with the Broom, and he also does include a complete set of wands, which I think is more than he needed. As for the minifig himself, his torso looks really good. He's just supposed to be a member of the Quidditch team for Slytherin, and yeah, his cape is one of the new ones that's flexible, but yeah, he looks really, really good in my opinion and he fits right in with the other Quidditch characters. Here is Luna, and there's a lot to see with her. She has the mini legs, she has a nice skirt piece, she has a purse, she also has a copy of the Quibbler, which is very nicely printed, really like that. Luna also is one of the only characters in the series to come with an alternate face, although I think I prefer her glasses face. But yeah, she just looks really good. I believe the hair piece is new, and yeah, just a really, really well done character. And yes, I know I sound repetitive. This next minifig is super iconic. It is Neville Longbottom and he's in his Herbology outfit. You'll notice that he has the earmuffs on because of this mandrake, which is a really nice printed piece. Really do love that. Neville also gets an alternate face, which you can see is for when he is passed out. And I think he looks really amazing as well. And this one is definitely one of the standout characters that is straight from a specific scene, and I like it. Next up, here's Cho Chang. She also uses a skirt piece, although I really don't like it on her. I think she'd look better without it. But I do really like her Ravenclaw torso. Check that out, it looks amazing. Cho also comes with a new owl. It's a new color for that owl piece. And I think it looks really good just to have more diversity of owls in Harry Potter. Here is Dean Thomas, and he's another one that looks amazing. He has a scarf and he also has the Gryffindor flag there, which is a printed piece. And I think Dean really looks good. He fits in with all the other Hogwarts characters without a doubt. And yeah, just another really recognizable and extremely well done character. Here is Voldemort and I think he has done extremely well. His face printing looks phenomenal. I really like that. Also the green robes and he uses the skirt 
or not skirt, dress piece on the ribs, which I think looks good. Voldemort's assess accessory is Nagini, and this is a very strange piece. It really doesn't seem Lego, and it actually doesn't fit onto studs very well, so that's kind of interesting. Who knows, maybe that's intentional, since Nagini's technically not a Lego, she's a Horcrux. This next minifigure also includes a Horcrux. This is Dobby, and he includes Tom Riddle's diary. You can see inside the diary is a sock for him, and on the front of the diary you can see the mark from where it was stabbed with the basilisk spine. Dobby as a whole looks really good. He does have a rather big head and he does seem just a little misproportioned compared to the other characters, but as a standalone figure Dobby looks amazing and I really do like the way he turned out, even though when I first saw pictures I didn't think I would. Next up we have Professor Trelawney and she's another one that I think looks really good. I really like the sand green torso and dress piece there. Her hair I believe is a new piece and it looks really really good. It just really matches the actual actor's hair. The face is good and I really like the inclusion of the new teacup which is actually two parts. You can see that the plate is actually printed which I think it's pretty nice. Next up is Cedric Diggory and he is without a doubt the easiest figure to feel in the blind bags because he has a huge trophy piece which you can see is actually printed all the way around which I think is nice. And check out the printing on his back. That is really nice. It says Diggory there and he's just a really well looking character. Cedric is amazing. And check it out, he also has printing on the side of his legs on both sides. It's just really well done. He's definitely very nice looking and definitely a great collection. Next up is Professor Flitwit and he's a major step up from the original version of him. He's got a brand new megaphone piece. He has the bow tie, he also has the coattails, and he's a shorter minifig. And yeah, all around Flitwit looks amazing. I really like him, I think he looks so good and I can't wait to add him to my Harry Potter display. The next figure is Mad-Eye Moody, or Barty Crouch, or Mad-Eye Moody. Either way, this figure is amazing for a ton of reasons. First off, as Mad-Eye, he looks fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. I love the use of the Maraca piece to be a potion for Polyjuice, and yeah, just really, really good looking. And when you turn around the head and you see alternate hair included, it becomes Barty Crouch Jr. And the facial expression says it all with this one. Really, really good. Next up, we have another version of Harry. Wait, where'd he go? This is Invisibility Cloak Harry, and he looks phenomenal. I really like the new Invisibility Cloak. It's a big step up from the original one. Just look at the way it shines light off of it. That's pretty cool. Looking at the rest of the cloak, though, it has a really cool printing underneath it. Not to mention, Harry looks so good without it. He's got pajamas, and he's got a new smile, which isn't included in the sets. And let me tell you, this figure right here is a lot more than you could ask for. He also does come with a wand, and yeah, this one's very, very good. Next off here is Dumbledore, and my goodness, without a doubt, the nicest Dumbledore we've ever gotten. Everything from the colors, to the head, to the beard, everything just looks fantastic. And check out the pensive. This Dumbledore looks absolutely amazing. He has a pretty nice wand. It's not the Elder Wand, but I can't complain. This figure is amazing. Next up is Newt Scamander, and I really don't know why, but he's one of my favorites in this series. I think it's because of the torso. The torso looks so accurate to the movies. Newt also comes with a suitcase here, which can be opened up. This is a new piece, which is really awesome. And just spinning him around, he's a really nicely done character. He also comes with the Niffler, which I think is a nice inclusion. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, seriously, my favorite character in this series is Newt. And he's not even that rare. It's not like a character we've never gotten before, but I really do like him. And I don't know why. He's just really, really good. Next up, here's Tina. And her accessory of a hot dog seems a little weird at first, but she actually does eat a hot dog when we first meet her in Fantastic Beasts. For the character, she looks really nice. The coloring on the hat and torso are all ones we haven't had before for her. And, you know, it's not a standout character, but still really nice and a great collection to the Fantastic Beast world. Here is Mr. Jacob Kowalski, and my goodness, he is done perfectly as a Lego minifig. Mr. Kowalski was actually a character in Fantastic Beasts that I just said to myself had to be a minifig, and he looks great. 
really does. The hair, the mustache, the torso, and even awesome Ur is inside. He has two pastries in there, and yet yeah, this figure is so good. Next up is Queenie Goldstein, and again, Queenie is another really, really well done character. I really like this pastry she has in her hand, just looks really good, and the printing on her all around, pretty well done. Here is Credence, and Credence I think is done 100% perfectly. He looks so accurate, and his facial expression just looks great. He has the Witches Live Among Us leaflet that he's giving out all around. Credence looks perfectly done. He also has an alternate face for when he is the Obscurious, and yeah, I really do like this Credence minifig. And finally, here is Percival Graves, and this figure is really well done, and spoiler alert, he actually is Grindelwald, so you get the alternate face there for him. And this figure is really good, and I really, really, really love this minifig because it's rare. There's only one included in each box of 60, and that is actually a pain when you're trying to find these. All the others have at least two or three, but this one only has one, so if you're trying to collect the series, good luck. I luckily was able to get one of these without having to buy a full box, which was a complete blessing. It kind of bugs me that they do that, it just makes certain ones more rare. But nonetheless, I really love this minifig, and I have the whole set, so I can't complain at all. And there you have it. That is my complete look at the LEGO Harry Potter collectible minifigure series. In case I didn't make it clear, I really love this series. I think that all the figures are well done, and I think that these figures all really, really well fit into a Harry Potter display, and I'm just happy with them. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, especially if you stayed for the whole thing. That's it for now, and I'll talk to you all again in my next video.